I'm River, and welcome to my Devil May Cry The Bloody Pals paint series. Today, I'll be working on the Queen Embusa. Queen Embusa is the matriarch of the Embusa demons. She is a much larger demon than the rest of them, but she's actually one of the more fun to work on. I begin by shaving off all of the mold lines I find on the creature. These can be found on the bizarre centipede-like limbs, the ends of the blades, sides of her stingers, most of the sharp bits that go down her carapace? I'll call it a carapace. Along the legs and arms, you can also find a large number of these mold lines. After giving her a quick prime in Army Painter's matte black, I realized that there's a lot of spots that the primer can't actually reach due to how close certain parts of the model are to each other. But a little bit gets in there and that's what counts. The paint will still stick so long as there's some primer. Pro tip, don't drop your minis. I start off with a base coat of Lich Skin. I'm going to be using this on the bottom scales of this creature. The ones that are found all along the front of her body as well as on the bottom part of her thorax. Remember to water down your paint just a bit and apply two thin coats to ensure proper coverage. I go ahead and I use Lich Skin as well to cover the legs, the arms, as well as all of the spikes and claws that it has. I take some dark stone and I use this to cover the entire top part of the embusa. There is a very large amount of carapace, so you'll need quite a bit of paint. Make sure it's properly watered down so it can seep into all the little nooks and crannies that it has. If you want, you can also get the lower half of it. That kind of meets with the other part of the carapace. Go ahead and get the entire section down the back of the creature. Be careful to avoid the bizarre, veiny globs on the left and right of the model. With Alien Purple, I go ahead and I begin base coating two specific parts of the creature. The bizarre, bloody globules on the top of its head, which I will soon paint to be red. As well as the bizarre, veiny growths that connect the armored front of the creature with the disgusting, centipede-like limbs on the side. Make sure to get both ends of it. Once that's done, I take a bit of skeleton bone just to get that nasty mandible skull combo on the front of the creature. If you get it a little bit everywhere, then that's alright. You can just come back and fix anything that you mess up. With Dragonfire Red, I go ahead and begin base coating any of the meteor bits. For example, where the claws emerge on the forearms of the creature as well as all of the bizarre bladed spikes that emerge from the top of its talons. I go ahead and I begin carefully base coating the postules that emerge from the front of its creature's head. These are presumably full of blood and human souls. I also go ahead and color the veiny bits on the sides. I went a little ham on this one, but I think it might look better if you just get the more prominent parts and not the whole thing. With some shadow wash, I go ahead and I begin to darken all of the armored bits. I'm going to be covering the entire model with this eventually. I use a 2 to 1 ratio of wash to water to ensure proper darkness as well as easy to manipulate the wash around the creature's body. Get all the bits everywhere, and if it begins pulling anywhere too much, you want to kind of use your brush to pull away from the pulling wash so that you don't have nasty, globby bits on it. I go ahead and I make sure that the little crevices that cover the armor, as well as the little nooks and crannies within the limbs, have a proper amount of wash in them so that they can fill up properly and have a correct amount of darkness in them. 
is very much adds to the depth of the model, but is completely optional. From this point on, you can call it quits, but I go ahead and I add some more detail. Come back with my Lich Skin and begin just giving a very light highlight over the entire front ridge of the model where it becomes symmetrical. I then go ahead and I give a very, very thin line of paint just to try to bring out the color and make it look like each of this front carapace is catching light. The musculature is then next on my list where I go ahead and I very lightly line the upmost parts of the limbs so that they can appear to be catching light more naturally. Go ahead and I line each of the weird bladed leg talons, whatever these are, as well as the front blade of the creature. Give the same treatment to the upper limbs, just kind of catching the raised bits on each of the muscles. I edge highlight each of the sections of the talons, as well as give a very careful highlight to the very tip of the blade. With Dragonfire Red, I go ahead and I begin just highlighting a tiny bit of the front postule-like growths. You can choose to highlight some or all of them. I kind of just pick out random ones here and there to give it a more naturally gross oozy effect. I go ahead and I highlight just a random here and there of the most prominent veiny bits on its sides, just to give it a little more life. Highlight a bit of the muscle that holds its talons in. As well as the little blade claws that are blood red and emerging from its talons. I follow up with a little bit of skeleton bone and just bring out the color from the bone again that emerges from its front facing mandibles. And I'm going a little ham here, but that's all right. With a little bit of dungeon stone, I prepare a dry brush. I get most of the paint off my brush by wiping it off on a paper towel. And then I come by and very lightly highlight any of those dark claw-like protrusions that I passed over my first run through. Including the stinger as well as any little talons that stick out the side of it. I give a dry brush on most of the back of the model, which I had originally colored with dark stone, just to give it a little life and to catch the details while maintaining the dark crevices created by the wash. I go ahead and give each of these spindly centipedal limbs that line its body as well. I give a little extra attention to the ridge that runs down the center of the creature's back just so that it can appear to catch a little more light than the rest of it. I come back with a little matte black and clean up the base. Any bit of color that may have gone rogue and found its way to the base, you can real quick clean up. You want to be careful and make sure that this is watered down and the entire base stays uniform. You can see here that I don't do that, but I come back after the video and I do fix that. And with that, your Queen Embusa should be done one of the more fun models that there are to paint in this. Lots of goopy bits and flat areas for you to fill in and highlight. If you thought this video was helpful, like and subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any further questions. As always, I'll see you in the next video. And here's a little size comparison. Don't talk to me or my son ever again.